Hello and welcome back to Guarded Hacking. This is Fred HK and today I'm going to show you how this promo kit for the Hollow Knight video game is hacking YouTubers. Let's get into it. A friend of the channel was sent this media kit in an email that was asking them to do a promo video for the Hollow Knight video game. If we look in the character promotional art folder, we can see some promotional art. And then also in the media kit folder, we can see a video that shows some gameplay of Hollow Knight along with the screen title so they can use it in the video. And then you can also see the contract for the Hollow Knight promo with this file here. As soon as the YouTubers will click on this, their YouTube channel will be stolen and it will be used for nefarious purposes. Let's see how this whole infection chain works. You can see in the properties that it's actually an MS-DOS application with the file extension being .com and the description of it is an installer. If we look at the size, it's absolutely huge with 605 megabytes. This may fool YouTubers into thinking that it's a lengthy document, but really this kind of packing is done to bypass antivirus scanners and other kinds of protections which can't handle files this large and struggle to create signatures for them along with scanning them for signatures. If we go and open this file in Detect It Easy, we can see that it's in fact a .NET binary and has a installer component. But of course, it's a 604 megabyte file. How do you expect us to decompile something that big and actually find the malware within it? Well, let's look at how it functions first. You may be wondering how a .com file acts just like an executable. Well, Microsoft put out a blog post explaining exactly that, how .com files came out long before executables were invented and how they had specific constraints such as not being able to be bigger than 64 kilobytes. Then, as these constraints were lifted, exe file formats were introduced. But because of backwards compatibility, Microsoft had to also support the old .com files that were very useful for the OS and for users, such as format, edit, and so on. So they made the .com files be able to be ran without any constrictions. This way, you can run a .com file just like you would an exe. Also, this makes it much better for threat actors to use because they rely on the victims not really understanding what a .com file is, whereas they may see that a file is .exe and not run it. Anyway, enough about the file format, let's look at what's in this binary. I've opened the binary in DNSpy as its go-to tool for analyzing .NET binaries. We can see that the file is internally named Sassy Inanga and has a few other random words like this scattered throughout the binary. If we want to look through it, then we're going to start hitting some of the common issues found within this binary that I've had to deal with. When first opening one of the drop downs, we see that it is protected by 198 protects a v4 by aptitude. And this is a packer that could be found on GitHub. It's a modification of ConfuserX. And already here in ConfuserX and modification, we know we're going to be in for a fun ride. Then looking at more of the code, when opening some of these classes, we see so much packed code. These being some variables here and going down, it continues to just be random variables and random functions. This is why the binary is so large. It's because it's filled with complete junk to make the life of a reverser completely impossible. So instead of going through DNSpy and trying to figure out what's going on, I'm first going to get a general idea of what the executable is doing by dropping it in a sandbox. So let's go and do that first. Some of you may be wondering, how do you learn malware analysis and how you can do the same as I do in these videos? Well, if you're prepared to put in the hard work and time, then I recommend that you go and check out the amazing content on the Guided Hacking website. There is an insane amount of technical content specifically regarding reverse engineering. So go check out Guided Hacking as your one-stop shop for all things reverse engineering. As always, I've used Triage to look at the file and I've executed it here within a Windows 10 sandbox. We can see that Triage has found a malware config within the files and it has turned out to be dropping Redline with a botnet of HCHC and this is the C2. If we look at the Windows 10 detonation, we can look at some of the processes of how this malware functions. First, we see the original file being ran and then PowerShell is ran and then ASPINet Net compiler is ran. Looking at the networking, we can see that PowerShell makes a request out to this IP with a subfolder of docs and then a file. This text file is probably a quite interesting file, so we'll take a look at it later. If we look at the TCP networking, we can also see requests out to the Redline C2 at the end. And this is within the ASPI Net compiler. So let's continue our analysis of the binary in light of this information. 
Because we saw PowerShell being ran by the binary, we want to see where these calls are made and maybe we can see what commands are being passed to PowerShell to be used. Let's go take a look. Before we go any further, I have to give a huge shout out to Casparinas and Draconia for giving me a lot of help while looking at this binary. Draconia was kind enough to remove some of the junk within the sample and fixing the control flow, whilst Casparinas discovered the PowerShell execution and where it may lie in the binary. A huge shout out to both of you and thank you so much for helping. This huge binary is not responsible for much more than downloading and executing using PowerShell. And this is where the command to PowerShell happens within this string.join. If I was to set a breakpoint within here, I would see within the variables of the binary that we will see the code passed along to PowerShell. And here is the code that is passed to PowerShell. We can see that it starts off with a sleep of 30 seconds. Then it sets an array of zero times a bunch of other numbers and calls a request to the URL that we saw earlier within triage. It'll take this and put it in the payload var variable. Then it'll base64 decode it. After doing all of that, we can see that a new object is created for AES and AES will be used to decrypt the binary with the private key being this base64 encoded string and this as an IV. And it'll create a decryptor and decrypt the payload var variable. Now, once this is finished, it'll set the payload into a memory stream and then gun zip it. Once it's unzipped it, it will copy it into another variable and then it'll call system reflection library and load the pay payload variable. Once done, it'll call invoke on the payload variable after it is loaded and will call into the entry point, thus giving control over to the downloaded and now executed binary. Visiting this URL, we are faced with this massive block of text and scrolling to the bottom, we see that is it, it is indeed base64 encoded with the classic equal signs padding. We can download this file and I'll put it on my desktop and call it encrypted.bit. Taking the downloaded text file, I put it into Cyberchef. And what we're going to do is we're going to completely replicate this decryption methodology that the dropper is using. So first it calls from base64. So we'll do that first within Cyberchef. Then Next up, we're going to see that it'll initialize the AES object. So within here, we'll call AES decrypt and set the key as the same that we got from the dropper code and the same IV from the dropper code. Then checking, we see that the mode is CBC, which is correct, and that we need to give it an input type of raw. Once done, we can see that the output is also raw, but we're not done yet. Next up, the PowerShell will put it all into a gzip stream and we need to do the same. So we'll put in gzip within Cyberchef, and we're going to use gunzip to decompress it. And after doing all of this, we can see that we get the normal executable headers of MZ. Then some more strings of this program cannot run in DOS mode. Let's save this as our next stage two dot bin and analyze it. Taking stage two dot bin and then checking it out in detect it easy, we can see that it's also written in .NET. Detect it easy doesn't detect a packer, so let's drop it straight into dnspy. Looking at the binary in dnspy, we get the same kind of packing with random words put together. Because we know the infection chain and what to expect, this packed binary is our final payload of Redline. I hope you all could take something away from this video and that you enjoyed it. Until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.